so it was just a few months after I'd quit drinking and things had fallen apart for me and I was ready to I couldn't live anymore I couldn't my brain was eating itself it was I was beyond hope and beyond repair and broken in, in ways that I thought were never going to be fixed and um, I wasn't sleeping I'd lost about 30 or 40 pounds um, I was throwing up all the time I would drag myself to class and then I would um, teach and come home and sit uh, for days sometimes um, I would be done teaching on Thursday and, and I wouldn't have to be back until Tuesday and, and oftentimes I wouldn't get out of it off my sofa um, uh, I wouldn't eat for days when I did eat I would throw up people had to come down and I tweeted everything I had hallucinations with conversations with um, dead relatives uh, I laid on the floor um, unable to do anything and uh, I told my mom later my uncle a few years before had a he was an addict and he killed himself and um, I told her after all this went down that I I understood why Dennis finally um, couldn't take it anymore because the overwhelmingness of my head and everything that I had done in my life and the ways in which I had treated people and, and the things that I had said and done were just, they all just existed at once and there wasn't any past and present and future. It was just all now and raw. So I decided that I, I had to kill myself. I couldn't, I couldn't do this anymore. And, and I had um, written my letters and uh, had started saying goodbye and uh, started, you know, doing the giving away things. And uh, I found a gun shop down in Tennessee that was between halfway between Austin and, and Kentucky. And after I went down to Texas uh, to say goodbye to everybody, uh, I was going to stop at this store and um, kill myself because I didn't want my parents to find me. Um, that's That seemed like the least I could do. And so uh, I never tweeted that I never wrote it in Facebook but it must have spilled out because in the weeks leading up um, messages I can't tell you how many emails and phone calls and texts from people I, had no, I didn't know I had no idea um, who had just joined my network um, for you know whatever reason over the years um, and none of them wished me well all of them told me stories about addicts in their lives uh, lots of them fathers, um, brothers, husbands, you know, many of them were men as we are afflicted with addiction um, in a greater numbers. Um, and also I'm, I'm a guy, so I think that probably resonated in that way. And to this day I get the number of emails and phone calls and things that I get from people are is amazing to me that when I write about addiction and things that it resonates with anybody um, but this is what I wanted my kids to know about Steve Jobs and why I know that I wouldn't be here because uh, the phone rang before I got to Tennessee and um, I didn't answer it and uh, I pulled over and I it got it was a message and it was from a woman and I don't know who it was from um, and she didn't leave a name and she didn't say anything um, about who she was or why you know how she found me but I, I she, here's what I know she's why she called she said you don't seem to be doing well um, and I uh, and I want you to know that um, people are watching and they care and I want to tell you about my father who um, who could never overcome his addiction. And she proceeded to tell me uh, the story of her dad um, who died. And she was, she didn't tell me to hang on. She didn't tell me anything other than, I just want you to know that people care. Even if you don't know, people care. 
and were watching. And she hung up, and that was uh, the last that I ever heard of her. I don't know who it was. I don't know anything about her. I sent tweets out and you know, posted in all the places, and I never heard anything from her uh, again. And I sat on the side of the road very much like I'm doing now, and just overwhelmed by the smallness of the world. And it was the first moment in sobriety that I realized that this wasn't just about me. Um, I am an atheist. I don't believe in God. I don't, I don't, I've never required those sort of articles of faith to, to live my life. Um, but that moment was the moment that I realized what my higher power was. Right? That it was that everybody. It was this network of people. Because it wasn't a computer. right? And this was the genius of Steve Jobs. Um, is that it was never a computer to him. It was a computer to Wozniak. right? It was, he was a hacker. He was a tinkerer. And I always identified more with him. Um, but it was the beauty of the design. And not the box. I make fun of the box a lot. But it was the design of the system that allows people to find each other um, and to take things with them and to carry each other with them and to make the world small so that you don't live in a small world. And there's a difference. And there's a, you know, it, it's, I, I think it was Twain that said, you know, that the difference between lightning and a lightning bug uh, is everything. And the difference between a small world and living in a in a world that's small is is different uh, and I don't know if the world would have developed that way without jobs I mean you you hear Paige and um, you hear Zuckerberg and and you hear Gates and you hear Ellison and you hear all of these people talk about the effect that jobs had and it's always about design he was not a technologist in the sense that we think about it um, and I always, I just, I laugh when people compare him to Edison and things like that because that's not, that's not what he was. Um, he was not, that isn't what he did. Um, and to think that that was what he did is, I think, to fundamentally misunderstand the importance of jobs and the zeitgeist of technology, right? Which is that he brought design to it. The system design that allowed us to carry each other with each other. Not that I couldn't do that with CompuServe and Quantum Link and all the different places that I've done it for years. My network has developed over 20 years online. Um, but it's undeniable that what he did was make it relevant to more people. Um, and I don't know if my network would have been that personal otherwise. It would have been smaller. Um, and I'm not even sure I can put my finger on the human factors. But this brings me back to why I'm in graduate school studying human factors and studying things like pleasure and usability to understand how to bring an emotion to a system because that's what it's about. And in my years of technology, this is the thing that I've learned. That at the end of the day, it's, it's not about the box, it's not about the hardware, it's not about the software. And this is when I read the Gladwell things and I hear people talking about these things. I think you've missed it. If this is what you think that this is, you've missed it. And I know it because I've lived it. Because I sat outside of a shop in Tennessee ready to kill myself. Because I couldn't imagine being sober another day. And the network, which are people, right? It's like Soylent Green. And the, that's been developed because of people like Gates and because of people like Jobs, people that I'll never you know, meet. I came across some of them at Wired and some of them at Technology Review, but that was passing in the night as a professional thing, have fundamentally changed everything about me. And my story, I saw a friend of mine, Eric Wolf, post like, my story for people in their 30s who are of a particular background um, and who are kind of nerdy have these stories. And there's millions of us, and we're everywhere. And jobs allowed that to not just be people like me, to allow it to be everybody, to make that network something bigger than I ever could have imagined that it could be. And so I woke up crying because, as I told my kids, the world will be a less 
beautiful place from now on. And the world will be less fun uh, because of that. And surely there will be somebody else that comes along and pushes this. That is what we do as humans. The world doesn't stop. Steve has passed. I'll pass. You'll pass. And there will be new things. But those things aren't mine. And Steve, for everything that I didn't like about the way he ran the company and for everything that I didn't like about the way that he looked at intellectual property and copyright and business practices is irrelevant um, because it was the human factors to me that always let me down, right? It was why I'm so adamant and angry about Apple so often because I think intuitively I knew it could be something bigger than it was. But that was me. That was my own stuff. That wasn't, that is irrelevant to, to what it was. And so I wanted my kids to know that today, um, that the story of my story of technology and why I'm so passionate about that is because the network is something bigger. Um, and Steve um, made that, and it was part of that. Um, and my world, um, while smaller and more connected now, is minus somebody. Um, and I didn't have to know him for that to be important. And I didn't have to like what he did for that to be important um, because it is important. Um, and he was here and he did do that. Um, and so I thought that I wanted to talk about this today um, for me. And because I know if you put things out on the network, um, it may be important to somebody else. So I hope you all share your experiences with each other. I would love to hear yours. Um, but if not, uh, mahalo, Steve Jobs, um, wherever you are.